My name is uh, Dr. Richard Gakey. Uh, I am a gastroenterology specialist, uh, which means I take care of digestive disease and liver disease, and the focus of my practice is diagnosis uh, of all conditions and treatment of uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, upper GI problems, uh, colitis, cancers. Symptoms for esophageal cancer are difficulty swallowing, uh, a solid food uh, that, that the patient perceives it's stopping on the way down. That's called dysphagia and that's the cardinal symptom and that, and that is considered uh, an abs uh, what we call an absolute indication to uh, proceed with diagnostic testing. Um, weight loss is also an important symptom. In this country, heartburn uh, of a very serious level over a long period of time raises the suspicion of uh, a condition called Barrett's esophagus. And it turns out that almost all of our esophageal cancer in this country is now related to Barrett's esophagus, uh, which would mean um, if a surgeon operated on someone uh, with esophageal cancer in this country uh, and you looked at the uh, segment of esophagus that he removed, in the background with the cancer is Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus is um, a change in the lining of the esophagus from, from uh, squamous uh, lining, which is, if you want to envision it, it's like your skin, to a glandular lining. Um, and that is uh, thought to be due mainly to acid reflux. Conversely, the, there are lots and lots of people with Barrett's esophagus, and the, the vast majority of them do not develop cancer, although the ones we, we diagnose, we follow uh, uh, much like uh, women are followed with pap smears or mammograms for early diagnosis. From the uh, physician's perspective, uh, a, a patient in their 20s or early 30s with occasional heartburn uh, raises almost no uh, anxiety about esophageal cancer. Um, a patient in their 60s with long-term heartburn on long-term medication to suppress the heartburn, who's a smoker, who's lost 15 pounds, it's almost the first thing you think of. Everybody knows that the, the prevalence of smoking in this country has declined a lot um, uh, over the last 30 years. It's down now to less than 25% of the population. And that um, uh, is thought to correlate with the decrease in that squamous cell cancer uh, it, uh, it, that um, is so prevalent elsewhere in the world and used to be the main form of the disease here. Um, there's, there are the, the other factors, uh, acid reflux, obesity, uh, uh, a diet inadequate in, in fruits and vegetables, uh, 
are, are also operating. And, and again, there's a lot of speculation there. Smoking, though, cannot uh, be um, uh, condoned for uh, any any reason. It, 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 cancer of the uh, lung, cancer of the head and neck, oral cavity, esophagus, upper GI tract, um, all connect with smoking very closely. The treatment of esophageal cancer uh, depends on the stage where it's diagnosed. Uh, most esophageal cancers are unfortunately diagnosed at a fairly advanced stage um, and the treatments available are, as with so many other cancers, surgical removal or some combination of surgery, chemotherapy and radiation. Other treatments fall into the category of what they call palliative treatment, uh, just making the symptoms better but not curing the disease. Major advances in the treatment of esophageal cancer um, uh, over the last 30 years, especially in the area of chemotherapy, where a certain combination of drugs was discovered uh, to uh, tremendously decrease or or obliterate all traces of the disease within the esophagus um, when combined with radiation. So it's, it's called chemoradiation. Um, the, and it's also sometimes called neoadjuvant treatment because it, it, meaning uh, a helping treatment because it's given before surgery is done to reduce the size of the tumor. Uh, but we're still stuck with that uh, actual cure rate. Uh, the statistic is 19% right now. 